Do you know the difference between a claiming pair and a pointing pair? I will show you how both of them will help you solve the colored cells, the red cell being the trickier of the two. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Look up here in block one. You notice how you have a one cutting across row three, and you got this one in column three and column one. There's only one place for one up here in block one. We can solve that. That's a hidden single. And then with these two ones, there's only two possibilities for one up here in block three. I'm going to mark that using something called Snyder notation. Anytime in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for can't mark it in case you solve one of these cells. You can solve the other one right away for that can. It's also going to give us some clues on some restrictions in the puzzle. Now let's look at the twos. You'll notice you have this two cutting across row four. You have this two coming up column two. So there's only two possibilities for a two in block four. However, these twos are a little bit different than the ones I just showed you because what they are is they're called a pointing pair. You notice how the two cuts across row four here and you have the twos are in the same row in row five and restricted here in block four. That means the two can't be anywhere else along row five. You know, or it can't be here because of this two and it can't be here because of this two, but now it can't be here anymore. That's called a pointing pair because if you put a two right here, you have no place to put a two in block four. So that's a pointing pair, very helpful. And what it's going to help us do is with this two now and this two, we can solve for two in block five. And then with those twos and this two, we can solve for two here in block eight. And with these twos and this two, we can solve for two down here in block nine. And with these two and this two, solve for two right there. With these twos, we can solve for two here. And then now you notice we have a two in column three. It's going to displace that Snyder mark, and then we can finish off the twos in block four. Greetings, friend. If you're new to the channel, I welcome you to Smart Hobbies. Subscribe if you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. Okay, now we're going to look at what a claiming pair is all about. You see you have these two threes right here. There's two possibilities for a three in block two. So I'm going to mark that with Snyder notation. Now, if you scan across block one, block two, you'll notice over here in block one, where can a three be? It can be up here in row one or row three. So this is kind of an interesting situation. And I'll highlight all these cells. Since the threes are limited to rows one and three and blocks one and two, what we know is that the three has to be somewhere in row two. So it's limited in row two here to block three. Whenever you see this situation, this is kind of like I call mini X-wing, but since there's so much other cells here, it's hard to see as an X-wing. But basically you need a three here in one of these cells, or three is going to be there in one of those cells, right? And so then once we see this situation, we know we can just focus on row two for block three. And since we have a three right there, we can solve for three here, okay? And if we, there wasn't a digit right there, this would be a claiming pair. But as it is, we have a nice hidden single three. All right, we'll remove some of these marks because we're going to continue on with the threes now. Because you have these two threes, and you got that three right there, we can solve for three in block nine. And with these two threes, two possibilities for three in block seven. And then with these two threes, two possibilities for three in block four. And now you see a really nice mini X-wing using these four cells. So we know a three's got to be here and here or here and here. In blocks four and seven, the threes are limited to columns two and three. And so what it tells us is since we know a three's here and here or here and here, a three has to be in column one up in block one. And so we can actually mark those and that's now a claiming pair. Because if you put a three right here, you knock out both of these threes, you'd have to put threes in column three for both block four and block seven. And that's not gonna work for us. All right, let me get rid of these colors. And now we can use this to move on to the fives. All right, with the fives, look at where this five is. It cuts across these two cells. So there's only two possibilities for a five here in block one. And since they're in the same row and there's no fives here, this is another pointing pair. So a five cannot be here anymore. We already have a five right there, but it's going to limit the fives of these two cells in block two. And then with this five and this five, we have another pointing pair of fives. And this 
These fives are going to be very important later on in the solve. It's going to actually help us with this green cell. But again, the green cell we can do before the red. We've got to keep it all the way to the red to save the most time in this puzzle. All right. So you got a five here, a pointing pair of fives there. Three possibilities for a five here. I'm not going to do the Snyder marks, but realize that the fives can only be in block seven up there in row seven. I cover pointing and claiming pairs in my Sudoku solving guide. Click on the pinned comment to download it for free. All right, let's look at the sixes. You have this six coming down here, down column two. And what you may notice, there's a couple ways to look at this. You could go, okay, the six can't be here or here because it's right there. And then because of this six, it can't be here. And so we have a hidden single claiming single. Other way to look at this is you have this six coming down, creates a pointing pair of sixes right here in block four. And so you have a pointing pair of sixes here in this six, and this six cutting across, we still only have one possibility for six in block seven. So you could look at it as kind of like the claiming single of the column, or you can look at it as a pointing pair from here. You're still going to only have one spot to put the six in block seven. I wanted to point that out to you. And once we solve that, we now can see with these sixes, there's two possibilities for six in block eight. And then you look right here and here, there's only two possibilities for six in block three. So they're a pointing pair. There's three possibilities here. I'm not going to mark that as well. All right, a seven. You got these two sevens, and you have this seven. We can solve for a seven. Only spot in block eight is right there. And then with the eights, you have four eights, one, two, three, four, all looking into block six. Whenever you have that situation, you know there's only one possibility remaining. So that's the only place we can put an eight in block six. And then with this eight, there's only two possibilities for an eight in block one. And with this eight and this eight, two possibilities for an eight in block Two. In the nines, you got this nine in column three, this one in column one, two possibilities for a nine in block seven. Okay, this is the critical spot. Give me a thumbs up if you made it this far in the puzzle. We've done all the Snyder marks that we can do. And if you don't know these next two steps, it's going to cost you the most time in a puzzle like this. We're actually ready to solve this green cell. And here's the step you need to know. At this point, once you fill in all the Snyder marks, you need a transition. Either you're going to go to single candidate strategies, or in the case like this, look for naked singles. We've been doing a lot of cross-hatching and pointing and claiming pairs. Look at the green cell here. What could it be? Well, it can't be a 1. It can't be a 2 or a 3. It can't be a 6 or a 7 or an 8 or a 9. So you might think it could be a 4 or a 5. However, if you remember what I said earlier, the 5s can only be in these spots. And you also have these pointing pair of fives. I'll tell you, this cell cannot be a five. It can only be a four. And if you don't switch to naked single, you may have, you have a really hard time finding and making more progress in this puzzle. And now we can use that to go with this four and solve for a four right here. And then with these fours, we can solve for a four here, displacing that Snyder one. And we're able to solve more in this puzzle. And then with these two fours, we got two possibilities for a four here in block two and then with this four and this four two possibilities for a four in block four and can we do more nope there's three possibilities for four we're not going to mark that right there if you really like these tips consider buying me a coffee or just click on the super thanks here in youtube i'd really appreciate it and now we got to get to this red cell if you didn't go from green to red right here you probably wasted a lot of time solving this puzzle again we need to look for a naked single. What can this be? Can't be a one, two, three, four, five. Can't be a six, can't be an eight, and it can't be a nine. You gotta look all the way over here to see that nine. This can only be a seven, okay? And once you do this seven here, now we're gonna open up a lot of possibilities. You know, you only need a five or nine to finish column seven. Well, I got this nine right here, so that's gotta be the five. That's gotta be the nine displacing the Snyder five. Okay, with these two sevens, we can solve for seven right there. You look in here, we have what's called a full house. Block nine has all but one digit filled in. So we know with certainty this has to be a one. Awesome. 
And now what can we do with that? With this one and this one, we can solve for a one right here. With these two ones and this one, solve for a one right here, solve for a one right there. Now all we need left is a six or a nine. I got a nine right here. I'm going to pull it over from block four. We'll go, that's the nine. And then the only remaining digit is a six. Okay. And then what we need across here, it looks like a seven and a four. You can look right here and go, okay, there's the two sevens here. This has to be your seven displaced in the Snyder four. And then I know the four is going to have to be in that spot. Now with these two fours, we can displace this Snyder four. Solve for four right here, displacing the Snyder three. All right. And then you've got all the fours taken care of. Where do we go from here? You want to look, look at this situation right here. You got three cells, right? But two of them will complete column six. So what we know is that these two are going to be a naked pair. And so whatever these two are, we can solve this cell with certainty. You can also look for a cross-hatching as a hidden single. Something's in this column that's not in this block, and it's the 5. You know, that's got to be a 5, which tells us we still need, it's like a 6 and a 9. Well, I got my 9 right there. I'll pull it over from block 6. There's your 9. There's your 6. Displacing that Snyder 6, we can solve for a 6 here. Displacing the Snyder 3. Awesome. And then we have... Right here is just a 5 to complete block 4. Okay, what else can we do? Well, over here we need a 6 and a 9. I got my 9 right there. So that's got to be a 9 displacing the Snyder 6. Looking good. And then with these two 6s, we know that this has to be a 5 or a 6. If I put a 6 right there, you know this is going to be a naked pair, also a hidden pair. The 5 and 6 are in those two cells. And so what's left is an 8 or a 9. Well, I got my 9 right there. So that's got to be your 9. This has got to be your 8. Displacing this Snyder 8. So we're going to take advantage of all these marks we made to help solve our puzzle. Okay? And then we know here, since we already have the 5, I can actually solve that already. That's a 6. That's going to be a 5. And then with these two 6s and this 6, this has to be your 6 right there. And then we're going to finish up column 5 with an 8. Okay, with these two eights, then, and these two eights, I'm going to cross half my way to this eight, displacing the Snyder nine, displacing that Snyder three. Okay, can we go further? Well, I only see one possibility left in column two. I don't have a five. I've marked a five. It's a possibility. That's got to be your five. And then we solve this three here, so we know that's got to be your three, and this digit is going to be a seven. I don't see a seven in block seven, so that's got to be your seven, and this is going to be your five. All right, we got one digit left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight must be a nine. Catch this next video to see more pointing and claiming pairs in action. Thank you so much for watching.